Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is based on the Paganini Etude Number no. Two in E Flat Major by Franz Liszt. This is based on the Paganini Caprice Number no. Seventeen. There are many difficulties in this. I actually think two of the hardest measures of all of the list Paganini etudes are contained in this. The first one, which we'll get to, is this little cadenza. And I have a really weird division for that because my hands never really felt comfortable with that division. So. We'll be going over that. Also, I find the octave section in the middle is difficult, but it's when you get to when you're jumping in opposite directions in both hands, I find that can be really difficult. So we're going to be going over in this tutorial as much as I can cram into about an hour. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that the fingering suggestions that I give you will be worth the entire tutorial um, in and of itself because I have experimented so much and changed the fingering so many times over the last few months of working on this. And I still have more to learn with this. I've performed them um, a few times now publicly, uh, the set of Paganini Etudes, but I'd still like to live with these for at least uh, another six months or so and really let them season and polish. Um, now, having said that, I perform these uh, early December, it's mid-January right now, and I haven't been working on them too much over the last month because I'm working on the first half of my program. Uh, the second half of my program will be the Liszt Paganini Etudes. So these aren't like super polished, like I just performed them, but I'll do my best uh, to show you as much as possible in this uh, tutorial. One of the most confusing things as you look at the score is how he divided up these measures and the counting. So I actually want to start with that because I've listened to so many recordings and, and recordings are quite free with this. By the way, one of my favorite recordings is Daniel Trifonov's uh, from his album Transcendental. He recorded like all the all the etudes of Liszt, um, Transcendental etudes, Paganini etudes, Concert etudes. It's brilliant. Um, and... Uh, in a lot of recordings, the opening is quite free. So, and you think, oh, great. And you start counting one, two, three, four, one, two. You can't do that. <laughs> You've got to actually go in common time, four, four time. So make sure that was just a, a little issue that when I went back and checked it after a little while of practicing this, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a moron. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. It doesn't seem too hard, right? Because you see common time. But the way people play this, they really get uh, emotional and take a ton of rubato. So it almost sounds like half time all of a sudden. Like... And you've got to keep that steady beat. So I'm not saying you need to be metronomic at all. This beginning is very free. But make sure to have an awareness of the counting, especially as you're starting this piece. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Now, you can... Or you can really bring out the middle voice. But I think that gets a little pedantic, a little busy, like, ooh, look at me show you exactly how I want to voice this. Um, and I fall into that trap all the time. So just be careful of that. Okay, so, and I just divide that like that. So I take the E flats there, and then just as written. Okay, now here. A lot of people go, you know, and just rush from the beginning. I always found it uh, a little easier technically and also a lot more charming to start and then rush in the middle and then take a little bit of time at the end. So the fingering I use is two, four, five, four, two, and then four, two, one, five, two, five, four, two, 
four two one five four two. So again, I'm gonna go slowly. I'm gonna do right hand first, then left hand to show you. So four two five four two, four two one five four two, five four two, and then four two one five four two five four two. So it goes four five four five five four five five. In other words, okay. So. So if you think there and then there, okay? And be patient with yourself. I remember. Getting that was difficult. Also, uh, you can check out any of my voicing exercises uh, through any of my YouTube videos uh, for help with voicing, but make sure you're voicing the top. I've got a lot of tutorials on that. We're not gonna spend any time in this tutorial going over that because there's enough info online on that. So in this one, I do, I start with four, two, and then I go five, three, three, two, two, one. And then just another bout of five, three, three, two, two, one. Okay, so four, two, and then five, three, three, two, two, one. Five, three, three, two, two, one. And I like to have a buoyancy. If you're too tight, it's it's an immediate recipe for disaster with uh, accuracy. Accuracy is already hard enough when you're skipping chords like that. The other trick that I like to use is to kind of glue my hands throughout those positions, like it's glued in there, and then glued, and then glued, and then this one kind of jumps around. The left hand's actually pretty easy to be accurate in because it's only two jumps. It's from there to there, and then from there to there. But the right hand is on a lot of weak fingers, four and five. So you can also practice add on from the end. And then, sorry, uh, I have not practiced this for a while. And then, and then one chord back and literally build chord to chord. And, and then one chord back, so right, left, right, left, right. And then left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Or sorry, <laughs> left, right, left, right, left, right. Yes, just like that, you always end on the right. It's a little confusing to explain this in real time. Okay, the way I divide this, I think this is worth the, <laughs> the whole price of the tutorial because this is a little monster. And you, I felt so horrible about myself because I could never, I think that if I'd given it a lot of time, like uh, several months, maybe. That division would have got more comfortable. Um, but I just didn't see myself being able to play that in like Trifonov's or Kissin's tempo when I heard it because it's and it just so I tried to use all my cleverness to come up with a different division now having said that uh, if I had to classify stuff that I'm not as good at in piano versus stuff I'm really comfortable with it's it's the opposite of a lot of people a lot of people think arpeggios and chords and jumps are really hard I tend to gravitate towards those and people often think scales are really easy. My scale work, like the intricate little passage work, maybe it's because I have huge hands, I don't know, but it's always been the opposite. I've always been a lot more comfortable with chordal jumps um, and arpeggios and shied away a little bit from scalar work. So if you have tiny hands, uh, you might find, or you're um, freaked out about jumps, you might find the traditional division of that to be better. But for me, what I did is I took left hand, I took those first three notes, five, three, two, and then I took the next two sixths um, in the right hand. I also found this division to be quite comfortable. By the way, it took me many weeks to get comfortable with this. It was it was comfortable from you know the first couple of days uh, in a slow tempo, but to get it up to tempo took me a while. So like, I'm just kind of throwing that off. But it, it took me a while to get there. So be patient with that if you're going to do this division and you're nice and comfortable with jumps. Okay, so I would just practice that. So the sixths, sixths, and then 
the fourth and the fifth, and then same thing. And then going down for that trill. The trill I use two one. Okay, and then I just take these chords, five, three, two on each one. So So Okay. And I would work small little pieces to there and then and there and there and then just that little part. And then you can thread them together however you want. So maybe you get rid of the first group and you do three groups here. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. There. And then you would start from the third group. And then you've overlapped every single possibility. And then you can do groups, random groups, like groups of five. That's really awkward for your brain. That's why it makes it such a good exercise and so forth. Again, you want to make sure you're voicing to the tops, especially on those descending sixths. The left hand, yes, try to grab that top one. So it's as if you're just playing that top line with one hand, but the right hand I think is even more critical because the figure would naturally rise up to there. Okay, now you might be thinking, how